Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button and join the growing family. Turn notifications on so you never miss a video and while you're down there give me a thumbs up because it really does help me out. Now today, you may notice because it's sitting on my bed, I'm using my vlogging camera and my Joe Vega Rev Hard. Today we're talking about BPD. Now I'm going to share my experience because like I say in all my videos I'm not a professional, I'm not training to be a professional, I don't intend on being a professional. This is just my experience. So let's start out when I was first diagnosed with BPD. I was 17 years old. I'd taken my first major overdose and I got referred to the community mental health team and honestly it wasn't great. I, the first appointment I had was with a psychiatrist who said you are you're showing traits of borderline personality disorder. A week later I went back saw a support worker and said, she said that on my record it showed that I had borderline personality disorder. So when I got diagnosed I really didn't know what BPD was. I didn't think of googling it and I genuinely just thought oh it's a condition I have. And I told my mum what, what it was. And she's like, borderline between what and what? I was like, no, it's called borderline personality disorder. She's like, yeah, but borderline between what and what? And I, I just said, it's literally called borderline personality disorder. Ah! Getting my mum to understand borderline personality disorder was hard. So, yeah, I form attachments quite quickly. I'm like, I'm very attached to my grandparents. And in the respect that we now video call every single day and yeah when they don't FaceTime me back or if we don't manage to talk for a day I panic that something bad's happened and that's such a BPD thing especially with attachments someone you're attached to doesn't answer you just feel overwhelming upset that something's happened. Now I don't talk about this very often because I know it's irrational. So whenever I, I went to A&E for mental, mental health the first thing that they pointed out was oh she's just got BPD. Bear in mind I also have bipolar di disorder diagnosis. Like, I've been diagnosed with bipolar since I was 13. So, that's 13 years now of a diagnosis. To be fair, at the end of the year, it's going to have been 10 years since I was diagnosed with BPD. So, that's fun. Love getting older. Another thing I struggle with when it comes to borderline personality disorder is abandonment issues. When I don't talk to someone for a long time and I can't contact them, I always feel like I've been abandoned and it's not easy to deal with at the best of times and To be quite honest, BPD is very complicated and complex. There's quiet BPD, normal BPD, there are subcategories. Let's quickly talk about quiet BPD. Now I personally don't have quiet BPD, but someone asked me to talk about it on Twitter so I'm talking about it. From what I understand, Quiet BPD is where you direct everything inwards. You don't show it. Like you don't show traits of aggression, you don't show... You don't self-harm, you don't attempt suicide every day.
it's the quiet form of BPD. It's the quiet form of BPD. That's just my understanding of quiet BPD. I may be wrong. Please don't hold me to anything. As I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not a professional. I'm not trained to be professional, and I certainly don't want to be a professional. BPD is a complicated mental health condition, and there's so much stigma attached to it that getting treatment really is hard. The primary form of treatment for BPD is DBT, which is Dietary Behavioural Therapy. But yeah, BPD is hard to treat, and a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists don't want to work with BPD patients because of the complexities that come with it. I've done DBT twice and it's never really helped me. I've personally found medication to be the best thing for me. Maybe that's because I have bipolar disorder as well. I don't know. But me being on medication has stabilised my BPD quite well. I don't have episodes really anymore. I nearly did the other day, but I handed over the medication that I bought to Overdose on. So, I did well. And that little scenario refers us straight on to the next subject, which is impulsivity. This is something that I struggle with so much. <laughs> now, I haven't self-harmed in over a year and a half. So my self-harm recovery is going well. I haven't overdosed in over a year. Though I did come close a few nights ago. And honestly, it's just been a bit of a roller coaster. I get really impulsive, so I buy I spend enormous amounts of money on things. For instance, on Monday I'm getting a tattoo of the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland because I love Alice in Wonderland. I have four books of Alice in Wonderland. I have two limited editions, one collector's edition and one picture book. I like what I like. That's an impulsive decision. I only decided Friday that I was getting it done and yep, now I'm going to spend £180 on a tattoo. So. Impulsivity is definitely an issue for me. I impulsively buy clothes, I impulsively spend money on Amazon, I impulsively spend money on tattoos. <laughs> it's just really, really complicated. But yeah, had to touch on it because it's an important part of BVD. If I had that money now, I would probably order at McDonald's. Oh joys. I get paid at midnight. Anyway, that's all I've got for this video. If you are new, subscribe. Join the Bone Family. If you want to take part in future Q&As, check out that the Instagram. And I will see you in my next video. Peace.